What's going on, boys? Today we are talking about a little ENTJ tick or two. The point is broken into a couple parts, so we'll start with the simple one. ENTJs organize their interactions by narrative or media archetypes. You'll be spending time with an ENTJ, and then when they are ready to initiate you into the next layer of whatever your relationship is, they will hit you with lines or scenes straight out of a movie. Or you'll be breaking down the way things are supposed to work between each other, and they will say things straight out of a movie. Maybe even straight out of a saccharine, sugary, Hallmark movie. They won't realize they are acting out scenes from narratives. They won't realize they're organizing thoughts in their heads according to narrative structures. And they won't realize their actions are not matching those narrative structures, those scenes. Yet they'll continue speaking those narrative words and using those narrative scenes. This is a lot worse with INTJs because they won't even sense something might be awry, and they won't even want to think about getting outside that structure. ENTJs can sense it a little bit, and sometimes they want to, or maybe they think they want to, but it's still in ENTJs. I think that tick is one of the reasons ENTJs can annoy INTPs and really piss off ENTPs. If we aren't prepared for it, if we don't know it's happening, ENTJs can come off either as fake or as dumb, because this is supposed to be, whatever it is, a big moment, it's supposed to be some kind of emotional, internally generated thing, and you're hitting us with movie scenes or you're trying to be an anime character and you aren't aware of it and your actions don't match what you're presenting, then INTPs get annoyed and ENTPs want to shake them. That organizing structure isn't bad necessarily, but it is limiting. You won't be able to unlimit their power level by removing that organizing structure without a lot of love and care involved. And most of the time, it isn't worth the effort. But I think it can be done. So, first point, ENTJs organize their thoughts by floating their brains on cultural streams. And they won't consciously realize their thoughts are being guided by something outside them, so try not to hold it against them when they hit you with it. I mean, don't let them drown you in that stream if they try to pull you down kicking and screaming, but don't hold it against them. Second point, or second tick. You might have noticed I said not consciously aware. We're talking about social scripts, we're talking about discourse, we are talking about framing, and we are talking about territorialization. Territorialization might not be the best word to use, but it jumbles the previous three in with it, so that's the one we're going with. First, ENTJs are controlled by social scripts. ENTJs are programmed to say what their favored culture tells them to say. Now, what's weird about ENTJs is many of them don't fit their home cultures, yet if you look at ENTJs across all cultures, they all look similar. A lot like INTPs in that way. I'm inclined to say the reason is ENTJs are progress-oriented, meaning no matter what culture they're in, 
their mindset will be, we need to be way ahead, way up there, right now, and the fact we aren't is a problem. Thus, in one sense, they are outside their culture. Yet, at the same time, they often still organize their unconscious thoughts or their interactions by their home cultures. I spend a lot of time speaking with Asian ENTJs, particularly Asian female ENTJs, and I mean culturally Asian here, because they're tearing themselves apart unconsciously. On one hand, like every other ENTJ, they want to be way ahead. Yet, inside, they are still carrying and organizing their relationships by the damaging home culture they often hate so much. And it's weird because that thing travels down generationally purely. Some types are good at bucking those chains once they're free of them, but ENTJs tend to struggle with it, at least from what I've seen. Now, bear with me. If you try to tell a hamster it's a hamster, it won't understand and it won't care because it's a hamster. Yet, without consciously understanding it's a hamster, it still does hamster shit. And it's savvy about it because it's a hamster. It doesn't need the conscious understanding to do what it already knows to do. Right, so we're talking about those four keywords. Social scripts, discourse, framing, territorialization. If you try to tell an ENTJ you are listening to this person solely because, or primarily because, they look like they have authority, they are presented as having authority, they sound like they have authority, even though in reality they don't, ENTJ will tell you to fuck yourself. ENTJs are objective. ENTJs are rational. The truth is what matters. None of those things you listed matter. That person is right because they're right, and ENTJ would still think they're right even if they didn't have all those other things. Yet, at the same time, ENTJ will disregard people who don't have all those things, and ENTJ will seek having those things for themselves because unconsciously they know those things grant people credence whether or not what they're saying is true. It's like instinctual doublethink. They will at once say none of those things matter, yet prioritize those exact same things because they know how intensely they matter and not consciously, which is what makes it strange. Because if they consciously knew, they wouldn't get manipulated half as often. Not just by people, but by those cultures they are still carrying with them, because they don't know how to identify them. They know they're important. On some inner, deeper level, they know they're important. Yet they lack the tools to analyze them on that level. So they are led by people with that sort of power as they try to become people with that sort of power, rather than breaking that sort of power altogether. Or at least liberating themselves from it and not getting fucked around so much. A metaphorical anecdote to explain what I'm talking about. INTP, or even INFP when they're getting feisty, says ENTJ, you get controlled by titles and headlines. ENTJ says, no I don't, and ENTJ believes it. And INTP, or INFP, says, alright, if you're so confident, I will write a thousand page thesis on why you're wrong and release it to the public. Are you so confident you're okay with that? And ENTJ, their instincts kicking in now, says, that's perfectly fine. As long as I'm allowed to title your thesis. Because if titles are this unimportant or shouldn't be listened to like this, 
It should be okay for me to title your thesis and your words alone will stand. You might realize something is wrong here, there might be a little bit of a contradiction, but INTP slash INFP sure as hell won't because at this point they're mad. And they say, okay, you title it whatever you want. We'll prove you wrong. So they write their thousand pages and publish it. And ENTJ titles it, Idiot, Loser, Seethes and Copes for 1,000 pages. Nobody takes the thesis seriously because why would you? It's framed horribly. With one line, you've reframed what I'm sure is a poignant argument into biting mockery. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. ENTJ says, this thing isn't that important, then instinctually uses that exact thing to demolish something that might screw with them somehow. Real example, a while ago I spoke with a Chinese ENTJ female immigrant. She hates the way women are second class to men in that culture. She hates the way daughters are allowed to be abused whenever and however. And she hates the way through all that they are still expected to support a family that doesn't really support them in any way. And she got to America by her own scholarship. Do you hate your home culture? Yes. Do you hate your family? Yes. Did they help you in any way? Did they raise you up rather than try to tear you down at every step of the way? No. Then why are you going back when you could stay? Why do you send much of your money home? And why do you call your family constantly just to let them berate you? The answer, you wouldn't get it. My next question, could you please explain it to me a little better so I can maybe understand where you're coming from? The next answer, no. That's not even an isolated incident. I've spoken with other, specifically from China, ENTJs, who told similar stories. I was close with an ENTJ from a different country, told the exact same fucking story, and they all, not just them, but most ENTJs I've spoken with, seem to realize the way these sorts of cultural streams, discourse, framing, oh god, what was the other one, social scripts, territorialization, they all seem to realize the importance of these things, which is why they try to get them and control them, yet they don't consciously understand them, and they let themselves be controlled by them. It's like, we want to get way ahead, and we know, on a gut level, we need to use these tools, but we don't consciously understand them, so we can't free ourselves from them. And we'll choose to stay stuck with these limiters we refuse to acknowledge. They are detached from, and chained to, the same thing at once, and it bugs me. And I think it is connected to the way they organize their thinking, particularly their relationships to people or over people with power, to narratives, and don't realize it. But that about rippity wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching, because I certainly enjoyed making it. I know this sounds like a negative video, but I swear to God it's a positive one. Like if you enjoyed, because it helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't, because we do this shit sometimes, and comment your thoughts, because I love hearing from you. If you are an ENTJ, in what way does your home culture limit you in ways you can recognize? Not just externally, but internally by thinking. That's one of the reasons I don't help unwire male ENTJs often. Because it sounds stupid, but unless you have that sexual energy and the trust that brings you can't do that work, you can't help with that work without somebody, you or them, getting fed up or mauled. It doesn't work. But thanks again for watching everybody, really we have a lot of fun on this channel, so much fun in fact, you can stick that in your pipe and smoke it because we are Faulknering ourselves up 
for a bit of flagellant irony I am aware of. That's all we have on this channel, and I look forward to doing this with you guys again in the future.